Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're keeping well and playing lots of guitar. So what have I got for you today? Well it's this beauty here and it's uh, another rare beast and it's sort of, I guess it classifies a heroic failure in sort of British terms of understatement. It's the Bond Electroglide and it's a super cool guitar and as you can sort of guess from the lights it's electronic. It's got digital readouts and it's got the strangest fretboard that you've ever seen and it was made in the 80s and uh, because it's 80s it's 80s electronics so I'm really hoping that we'll get through this review without it uh, dying because they are a little bit temperamental. Um, sadly not made anymore but uh, uh, since I started looking at this guitar recently I've realised that actually trying to revive it so the actual guy who started the company who sadly died in 1999, Andrew Bond, his son has decided to revive the brand, so hopefully we'll see some more of these. So what can I tell you about the history of Bond guitars? Well, Andrew Bond uh, was originally a bus conductor in Poole in uh, England. And uh, he met up with another bus conductor called Ian Flukes and they decided they really wanted a career in music, not uh, doing tickets on buses. So Andrew uh, Bond wanted to actually make guitars. Ian Flukes, by the other, on the other hand, wanted to actually manage bands and he started up a uh, talent agency called Wasted Talent. And he managed to sign up some really top bands at the time like U2, the Eurythmics, Big Audio Dynamite, and Echo and the Bunnymen. And these guys, they changed a very shrewd move because these guys eventually became real ambassadors for the Bond guitar and were known for playing them. So how did the guitar come about? It uh, originally came from Andrew Bond was experimenting with a Gibson guitar that he already owned. And he put on a sort of fiberglass fretboard, which is a very original part of this, on top of this Gibson guitar, and realised it had some, some benefits and was an interesting approach. So he went up to Scotland and got a grant from the Highlands uh, Council, or some other council up there, and started up a company in Scotland, in the Highlands, and started making these guitars um, and he made them from around 1984 to 1986. Uh, it's only a couple of years and made about 1,000 to 1,200 of them. Now these guitars actually in the world where we live, this is the guitar world, people are generally quite conservative with the small c and, and they don't like designs that are too different. And the guitar itself isn't particularly um, an outrageous shape. It's, it reminds me of old Gibsons with the double cut, the old Marauder. Um, but where it really differs is that you know, it's made from a carbon fibre composite, so it's actually very, very light. It has, as I said, these interesting electronics controls, which I'll cover in a moment. And it has this really unique fretboard because um, I'll do a close-up picture, but if you can see, it looks completely smooth from some angles. But in fact, it's a hardened, anodized aluminium uh, sawtooth arrangement, and where sort of peaks of the sawtooth form the frets. And so it's incredibly smooth to slide your hand up and down. You don't feel your fingers bouncing on frets. Um, it's not quite so good for bending, uh, if, if you are a sort of blues person. It does bend quite nicely, but you know, it's, um, it might choke out at some points. And actually when I've seen demonstrations of this guitar, you occasionally hear notes suddenly die away, where it's, it hasn't quite worked. Apart from that, it just feels like a normal guitar to play. There's nothing particularly unusual about it. Um, you don't have to adapt in any way. Now in terms of controls, um, it has these electronics and uh, they all fit in the back in this panel here which, which looks remarkably like a toilet seat lid. kind of wanted to open up really. Ooh. And uh, you have pickup selector switches, so you've got five of them and you've obviously got the three pickups here, one, two, three. Uh, if I could quickly turn it around you can see 
on there when I select them you can see lights moving along. Now when you're in either the uh, bridge or the neck you, these other two switches come into play. So in the bridge position you should hopefully see that green light turn red. Yes you did. And if you're in the neck position in the bridge position the same happens and this blends the two pickups when you're in those two positions here. Now the other thing you'll notice these rocker switches here these allow you to control volume, treble and bass and quite remarkably it's all electronic so you have uh, rather than the potentiometers they have some uh, AT circuitry in there I think it's probably CMOS or uh, chips in there that actually do active filtering so quite a quite really powerful electronics for its time very nice bridge and uh, tailpiece there very high quality locking tuners all in all quite an expensive thing and as I said you know that the, um, it was very popular when uh, Andrew Bond had uh, started up the company he went to the Frankfurt method to show this off and there was a lot of interest and as I said some famous people play them you know David Stewart from the Arrhythmics but uh, probably most famously uh, was Big Audio Dynamite Mick Jones of The Clash had one and you know, the Edge from U2 also used one extensively on the Joshua Tree and uh, it was used for some solos and a lot of other tracks on the um, album used this. So, very cool guitar. Um, only 1200 made as I said. Um, I actually have two and I have a second one which I will show you now. So here's my second Bond Electroglide and you'll notice there's some bits of wires hanging down here and it's not quite the same here and I put some lipstick pickups in instead. I still have the originals, I should probably put them back but I just thought since I was modifying the guitar, guitar I should uh, do something a bit different. Um, so what have I done here? This guitar was one of the sort of last few that hang around the factory that never got completed and so it seems like the nut hasn't been cut properly but it's got the correct tuners, it's got the correct hardware here um, what it didn't have was any of the electronics so I've rather messily put in an Arduino mega board here and some relays I have some touch sensitive uh, uh, electronics going on here nice colour display and my intention is to, you know, to actually try to revive the Bond in a sort of modern way using modern electronics. As I said, you know, Andrew Bond's son is also planning to do the same. This is more of a sort of home project for me to keep my mind going because um, a lot of the time I'm not writing code anymore but this gives me a chance to play around with some Arduino code and some real hardware and it's actually a lot of fun. So what does this one do that's different? Well, because I have this um, touch sensitive switching uh, you can see the lights change so I, I can select any of the pickups and have them all on if I want. Um, there's a tuner selector here. Um, I haven't got it connected at the moment but you can see I, I made some changes to the display there so that uh, you can see that it would be a tuner. If I uh, turn it off again you can see that it shows which pickups are on in very small text so you probably can't see it. And there's also some dynamic controls here with the touch sensors that allow me to vary the volume and tone. So hopefully I'll get this working one day. It does make noises at the moment but it sounds pretty horrible. For some reason it's picking up a load of noise even though it's relay switching not electronics. Um, so I'll have to try to fix that. So I can't make this one make any noise today but I'll have a go with the other one. And as before um, I'll take you through some of the sounds uh, in the form of a very primitive composition but hopefully it gives you an idea of what these things sound like and I really hope that they get revived because uh, they deserve to it was something that you know, really should have been more successful than it was so thank you <laughs>